Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome on Youth Matters with me, your host, Sakina Habib. Did you know that one of the duties of Shias in Ghaibat is to compose poetry or couplets in the praise of Imams and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim wassalam? Well, these activities are ways to help the time of our Imam, Imam al-Zamana, ajalallahu ta'ala, farajahu sharif. A tradition from our sixth Imam, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, is recorded in one of the chapters of Al-Mijar in the book Wasail al-Shia, where Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Allah makes a house in paradise for one who composes a couplet about us. And again, it is narrated from our eighth Imam, Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam, that he said, for one who composes in our favor a verse of poetry, the Almighty Allah builds in paradise a palace that is seven times the size of this earth. Subhanallah, where he will be visited by every proximate angel and every messenger and prophet. So that is beyond beautiful. And in fact, it is very immeasurable, don't you think? I am pretty much inspired by these hadiths. Now to carry on further in our discussion for today, I have invited our very special Noha Khan, who is right now one of the leading artists in this generation of Noha Khani. And he truly works really hard in, you know, putting great efforts in preparing the work that, you know, he presents to us. And I personally would like to know from him what goes on behind all the efforts put into poetry, uh, composing, mastering, and bringing out that phenomenal result in front of uh, a worldwide large audience. Because, I mean, have you ever thought what really goes behind in preparing, you know, these mankabats and and, and nohas that we listen to on a regular basis, definitely something to look into, you know? So uh, I would like to welcome uh, Yusuf Ali Okera on board with me. And I would also like to welcome Salwa Habib to share and express her love for poetry in the praise of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to the both of you and welcome back on Youth Matters on a new episode with me. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, so it's a great pleasure and honor having you both. Um, uh, before we, of course, begin and continue our program, uh, I would like, uh, you know, for us to have that Ronak in our today's program. So um, I would like to request Yusuf to begin by reciting some beautiful verses in the praise of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam, with the salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum. You can take the floor, Yusuf. Audhu billahi minash shaitan ar rajim bismillah ar rahman ar rahim assalam alaikum to sister sakina sister salwan all the viewers watching me uh first of all thank you so much uh to sakina baji for giving me this great opportunity uh to serve the halul bayt alayhi salam in front of all of you mashallah uh, all the hadith she gave uh i'm sure it's uh, given a huge lesson to all of us and shows the importance uh, of praising the halul bayt alayhi salam and uh nothing more important than uh, the praises of the Ahlul Bayt in our lives. Uh, so, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to the right path, inshallah. Uh, and I will I'll just bless this program with a very, very short uh, qasida uh, in honor of the Holy Prophet, if I have your permission. Bar Muhammad wa Muhammad salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa Kisi ne poochha ke kya hai Bhala madine mein Kisi ne poochha ke kya hai Bhala madine 
मैं बोला है मेरे मुश्किल कुशामदीने में किसी ने पूछा के क्या है नबी के रोजे पे जब या हुसैन मैंने कहा नबी के रोजे पे जब या हुसैन मैंने कहा बना दी मैंने भी एक कर बना मदीने में किसी ने पूछा के क्या है मेरे इमाम जब आएंगे सबसे पहले वो मेरे मेरे इमाम मेरे इमाम जब आएंगे सबसे पहले वो बनाएंगे लहदे फाते मामदीने किसी ने पूछा के क्या है जो मुझसे पूछा गया है कहा वतन तेरा जो मुझसे पूछा गया बगैर सोच ही मैंने कहा मदीने में किसी ने पूछ के क्या है आखिरी शेर आप तमाम उम्मीद के सामने पेश करता हूँ इमा में असर के आने तुम दुआ सो मातम बपा मदीने में किसी ने पूछा के क्या है भला मदीने محمد وعلى محمد محمد وعجل فرجهم ما شاء الله beautiful بہت ہی اعلی پڑھا آپ نے یوسف thank you so much and you know you've really enlightened the session already in the praise of the اہل البیت علیہم السلام as the topic goes thank you so much for you know sharing very beautiful verses with us now یوسف today Let's talk about, you know, some technical things, yeah, that go on uh, behind the scenes when, you know, you prepare these manqabats and uh, these beautiful nohas and khasidas. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that a lot of uh, work goes on behind the scenes, a lot of preparations. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about your uh, very recent Muharram studio recordings uh, of this year. Uh, they're very nice. I heard them. And my question is, you know, how long does it take for one track to be recorded? Uh, so everyone is different um, in the field of studio recording. Of course, there's more people that have experienced 
the studio field for many years uh, and uh, they've started from young ages. Uh, for me, it was a bit different. I started just three years ago. Uh, okay. I was actually waiting for that moment. You know, I could have started it when I was much younger at the age of 10, 11, uh, but I didn't, I didn't choose that decision because I, I think people, uh, the studio recording is, it's not, it's not the same as live recitations. It's two different things yeah. if you understand where I'm coming from. Uh, so I, I thought that when I was young, I was very nervous, first of all, because many people did approach me saying like, oh, you should start the studio recordings. It's definitely the right time. And then yeah. I guess the opportunity just came itself uh, three years ago, Alhamdulillah, where I got to do my first recording. And uh, then my first album, uh, of course, the question was, how long does it take to do the recordings? Yeah. My first album was much more difficult than this year's and uh, last year as well, because okay. of course it was my first time in the studio. I was thinking what, what sort of techniques, what so cool, uh, how do I have to recite the line? Uh, is there breaks that are going to come in between? Oh, there's so many different aspects of the recording. So this year, Alhamdulillah, I managed to do it much uh, quicker than every year. Uh, I think it took mm -hmm. me it took me a, a whole day, to be fair, uh, to do one noha. Okay. Uh, okay. I didn't, do all, uh, I didn't do all of it all at once. I, I took a break in one day. So two hours, I'd start with the, the chorus and do like two to three verses, give myself a break. And then after a couple of hours, continue. But it yeah. took me a whole day to do each track. A whole day, yeah? yeah, yeah, and and of course, I think it, it differs. Like you know, when you recite live, uh, normally, Absolutely. you know, in public, and when you actually recite in studio, I think there's like this difference, you know, and you become yeah. more conscious somehow about your yeah. voice in the studio, right? Definitely, definitely. I didn't, I didn't know that it's that crucial. I didn't, I didn't know that live in studio is that much of a big difference. But I guess uh, you can only know how hot the fire is until you touch it yourself. So, uh, <laughs> well I, said, I yeah. Uh, I got to know, yeah, yeah, I agree with you, yeah, okay. Uh, and Salwa, so, um, also about you, okay, I know that you write good poetry, you know, in the praise of Ahlul Bayt, and of course, general poetry as well, Salwa. So, uh, my question to you is that where do you get your inspiration from when it comes to writing poetry? <laughs> Um, um assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh first of all uh thank you so much uh sister sakina for having me here and um poetry is uh something that is um that really uh that really serves as a source of comfort for me you know it is something that i have always turned to um every time you know in times of like despair even in times of happiness you know um, and especially when it comes to poetry of Allah and the Ahlul Bayt, uh, I don't usually um, share the poetry that I write um, for Allah and the Ahlul Bayt. It takes me a lot of courage to share the poetry that I write in general. And especially when it comes to Allah and the Ahlul Bayt, it takes me more courage to share it. Because I feel like, um, I feel like that is a, a secret between myself and them. You know, like I, I hold it and esteem and regard it to a very high importance. Although I've had friends and family tell me that I should, um, you know, share my poetry, uh, but I guess I'm just uh, not confident enough to share it yet. But um, in a way, because as I said, that uh, it is what really uh, connects me to Allah and the Ahlul Bayt more. And, um, you know, I feel like there are some things, uh, like anything, it can be anything for me, uh the one thing that uh like the poetry that i write is um uh, is like a, a secret between us you know and um okay. it really comforts me and gives me solace yeah and so basically like uh i look at other people's poetries as well and uh, everything and uh then you know uh when it comes to allah and the Adel Bayt, uh words just naturally come to you you know yeah. Um, from inspiration, from majalis that you've heard, perhaps, or when you simply remember them, or simply remember all the tribulations that they've been through. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good, well summed up answer, mashallah. 
um, I can understand where you get your inspiration from. Uh, that's nice. It's a good motivation, you know. Um, now, uh, Yusuf, I'll get back to you. Um, when we talk about your tracks, right? Um, what is the procedure of your track? For instance, uh, you know, poetry, uh, as Salwa said also, uh, is the number one go-to thing, you know, to start off with. So how does that come about? Like, how do you, you know, think about the topics and then, you know, you're penning them down and then the whole procedure, basically. Yeah. So, of course, uh, believe it or not, I've already started uh, working on next year's album. I've already started contacting. Wow, from now. And, and uh, I've literally told them, like, I know how busy it gets. Just imagine for a poet taking out so much time for thousands of recitals. Yeah. They have to uh, write so yeah. much and, and it takes a lot of time and effort. So uh, yeah. the poetry side, uh, for me personally, plays a very huge role uh, because I believe that when, when it comes to the poetry, it has to be something unique and something new for the audience to benefit from. Uh, like uh, yeah. last year, I could give you an example, Sayyid Raza Bazadi Saab, for example, one know which I really mm -hmm. liked of his, Karime Karbo Bala Mojiza Dikha Dije, which was a phenomenal mm -hmm. track. Uh, beautifully written yeah. by Dr. Rehan Azmi, a great well-known poet and someone unworthy like me can't uh, really uh, praise him. But mashallah, uh, ha having this high standard uh, for the poetry aspect of, of the Kalam plays a very uh, huge role because that, that Kalam in specific, I've, I've realized since we've been uh, going through COVID-19, the 18, 19 months, which have been really difficult, uh, you need something new yeah. to come out and just to, to take you back to that old environment that we were in after being virtual and uh, not being able to attend majalis, etc. So I think uh, the poetry side has made me a bit more strict now. Uh, so for this year, it took it took a lot of time, like every year. Uh, there was a know-how which I did of Hazrat Abbas al-Islam, Emere Ghazi al-Amdar, Agar Tum Hote. So normally the poet would actually write for you an idea and give it to you and then you give it to the tuner to make the tune on uh this one was different yeah. so he had the tune already and i sent it to the poet which made it even more difficult for him because he has to there's there's oh, wow. rules in poetry beher kafia radif uh, there's many people who might know about these things so so when you have a tune first and and you're given the tune first the idea first it, it makes it so much harder and i was thinking i don't know if i've uh, made it much more difficult for him. I sh maybe I should have just got the poetry. But, uh, mashallah, my dear brother Ali Raza Surani from Mumbai, uh, I I gave him the tune and I think it was uh, in a few weeks, he was just thinking, he's very strict with poetry as well. He said, look, Yusuf, I can give you anything. I can give you anything on the spot. It takes me an hour, two hours, but I want something to be unique. So give me some time. And of course, India was yeah. affected very badly with COVID-19. So it did take him a lot of time. Yeah. Being in that right state of mind as well, that also plays a huge role. So yeah, thinking of yeah. the topics and whatnot, I guess sometimes it just comes from above. It's, it's not something which you really plan. Uh, me personally, I do plan it. For others, maybe it's different. Like for now, as I've said, for next year, I've already planned uh, what type of nohas I'm trying to uh, record. And even this year, I also had a new kalam uh, on Ashura, which had a very, very, very unique topic, Khake uh, Karbo Balabatati, which talks about the soil uh, on the day of Ashura, basically describing the tragedy of Karbala. And uh, Janab Sajjad uh -huh. Heather, Birmingham, a uh, very, very educated individual, mashallah. Uh, I gave him the topic of Ashura, and he, he basically did the rest of it. The ball was in his school, and mashallah such a phenomenal yeah. I didn't know all these aspects were uh, really you know to be like taken into account like uh, this yeah. is something new actually for me like did you know about this Salwa that you know all uh, these things like play when it comes to penning down poetry this is like a new <laughs> what do you say um, like a new subject basically uh, I've never heard of all this uh, yeah, I'm before, very glad so. we've been We've been blessed to touch upon th this specific uh, topic. Yeah. Because there's many people who don't really know what goes behind the scenes. And trust me, people, like, it takes it takes a whole year. Like, if I had to start my Nohas, like, uh, today for next year, it's still not enough time because it just is so much yeah. stress. And, 
and you have so much to think about. So yeah, Alhamdulillah, I'm glad that we've been able to discuss this. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, that's good. Yeah, it's really good to share such things, you know. Um, now, Salwa, can you tell me, um, you know, what certain characteristic do you, you know, admire about a certain personality from the family of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam and what motivates you to write on them? Um, uh, first of all, Brother Yusuf, I think it's really nice to know all the all the hard work and all the efforts that go into making these nohas that we listen to, you know, on a daily basis. And um, I think it's it's really beautiful, you know, um, as in when we when we listen to a noha or something, we don't really know what all the hard work that is going behind the effort. And like, as you said, that you've already started preparing for next Muharram. You know, I think that is that is extremely amazing. Uh, may Allah increase in your tawfiqat and all noha khan's tawfiqat, inshallah. So that we can keep getting more content like that. Um, and about the about that, um, I think um, you see when it comes to the Ahlul Bayt, I feel like there's just no limits, you know, because yeah. um, they just they there's just there's like a sea of beauty and a yeah. sea of knowledge, and there's just so much. That like every single passing day, with every single passing day, you learn so much more about them and you learn so much more about their lives. I don't think um, any one person on this planet can really claim that they know an individual of the Ahlul Bayt completely because I feel like there's so much, so many hidden jewels yeah. within them that we still don't know, you know. Um, uh, there's just so much beauty in these individuals that Allah has created. And every Imam has a characteristic or a trait that stands out. And when I hear any of the Imam's names or when I hear anyone, the name of anyone from the Ahlul Bayt, like a part of that character, like they're unique, what makes them unique, it really, that's what comes to my mind. Like, for example, when I, when I think of Maybe Fatima, for example. The first thing that comes to my mind is Haya, is you know, it's it's modesty, it's chastity. Also, when I think, it's also knowledge. When I think yeah. of Bibi Zain, for example, the first thing that comes to my mind is courage, is strength. Again, knowledge. You know, um, when I think of Imam Ali, for example, you know, I think. Again, like like bravery. And Imam Ali's name is such that if you take Imam Ali's name in front of any muhib, it just brings a smile to their face. You know, that is the Im yeah, that is the exactly. effect that Imam Ali has. All the Imams have a various effect on us. They all have a different effect. And remembering them, it has a different effect on us. When we think of Imam Hassan, it brings tears to our eyes, you know. Um, and I think uh, one uh, out of all the Imams, they're worthy of so much respect, you know, and there's something that makes them all unique. And I feel like even when we pray for ourselves or for the community, we should uh, take those unique characteristics and and pray. Like, for example, when it comes to uh, controlling temper or anger, we should think of Imam Musa Kalim and use his wasila, you know, and take his wasila and by his name. So, you know, I hold this to very high regard that, you know, if there's any quality that we wish to improve in ourselves, we should remember uh, which Imam is known for that quality and pray for it accordingly. Um, and I think, well, personally for me, um, I really enjoy uh, writing poetry uh, very much, especially about the Imam of our time. Imam Hadi alayhi salam and Ajallahu ta'ala purudu and the thing is that um, I feel like we are guilty of not remembering the Imam of our time as much as we should you know and uh, because we could say that okay we have uh, like plenty about the other members of the Ahlul Bayt but we could say that oh we don't really have plenty about Imam al Zamana because he's in Ghaiba and um, but then again like he really is the imam of our time and it is our duty to know about him and to think about him and i think the, the one thing that really stands out in imam mahdi 
Allah Ta'ala Farajo especially, is I think his patience. He has been patient for all of these years. Even though we know that there's nothing more that he wants to come and to bring change. He wants to come, you know, he is waiting to come. You know, I feel like we mm -hmm. say that we're waiting for him, but I feel like, no, he is actually waiting for us, you know? Yeah. And uh, whenever I think of uh, poetry or not even like poetry, just like a few words or like a monologue or just like, like anything, you know, I always think to write about Imam Mahdi and especially remembering his patience, how he has endured all of these years um very patiently under the command of allah you know and how hard it must be for him you know so whenever i feel impatient at any moment in my life i remember the patience of the imam of my time you know and thank, that you so uh, <laughs> thank you so much salwa uh the way you really like articulated every uh imam's and bb's personality so well i really loved it i mean uh, it was to the point very clear and i think we can really relate so i really thank you for you know sharing that um especially about imam zamana very true we are very guilty indeed and we should remember him every day and i think one of the activities that we can do is by this doing poetry writing poetry for him okay um yusuf let's get back to you yeah so let's talk about composing now um when it comes to the composing bit and the tuning side how long does it take to compose your kalam of each track and also how does one come um on the ideas of tuning like is it based on the lyrics or words i know you mentioned it uh, earlier but if you can you know just let us know briefly a bit more on this yeah so I believe that the composing and uh, being a poet, both of them are basically the same. Uh, nothing, one is not harder than the other. Both play a very huge role and uh, both do require a lot of hard time and effort. Uh, composing, I've, I've had the experience of composing, alhamdulillah, uh, this year and last year. Uh, it's It's... For me, it was just blessed, like, mashallah, the first time I ever thought of doing a composition, I never thought that I would uh, come to the stage of uh, even thinking of that, you know, tuning side of, of the know. I thought that I'd just give it to people and, you know, like, let the master do his job. Uh, but I'd like to share a story. Last year, I was uh, sat in my bedroom and uh, a very close friend of mine, Abbas Hadar Lalji, who is a mashallah phenomenal mm -hmm. composer uh, from Birmingham and well known for his uh, projects. So there, there was a noah in front of me and I was thinking to give it to him uh, to compose for me. But then uh, Mola just gave me that opportunity, alhamdulillah, and an idea came and I showed it to him. It was my very first composition. So I thought, you know what, it's it's worth a shot. Let's see what he thinks about it. I sent it to him and mashallah, he was, he was very, very happy and mind blown shocked for the very first time and i thought that he was just trying to you know like uh just make me happy say mashallah is very good but we we started getting a bit more closer and started working on the composing side together more uh and okay. uh, it took it took a lot of time in fact that one just came very quick and i i think it took maybe two to three weeks uh, maximum to get the final composition uh, because we both worked on it together, uh, two great, like two minds think uh, better than one. Uh, so I thought, Alhamdulillah, definitely yeah. I should give Abbas by the chance to help me out because he has more experience in this field of composing. And uh, he, he composed two of my nohas this year as well for my Muharram album. Uh, he was very, very quick, uh, mashallah. There was one noha, the Ashura noha, which I just mentioned. Uh, initially uh, someone else was meant to compose that but time was very short and I had a very strong feeling that Basbai would give justice to the composition so I sent it to him and in an hour he was like inshallah if Mola wills and something comes then I'll send it to you uh, and in an hour he sent me something exactly which I was expecting uh, for the poetry uh, it literally fits basically as you asked as well uh, do do 
reciters compose uh, based on the words to express feelings. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think I think uh, most of the time this does happen. Uh, you don't really realize it's a blessing from above. It's always a blessing from above. None, none of this, whatever we're doing, it's it's nothing from our ability, and it's honestly a blessing of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by the wasila of Ahlul Bayt al Islam. And uh, Abbas Bai has done a great job for many of my nohas and all the other composers. There's so many people I've worked with, mashallah. And it uh, the composing side is not easy because there's many scales. The way poetry has its own laws, uh, the the composing side has rags, which which is different scales. Okay. Uh, the way in Quran you'd have maqams, uh, it's very similar. Yeah. yeah. Well, some maqams, yeah. Uh, it depends on the theme or the uh, you know the environment of the kalam. For example, you have to do something uh, similar to that feeling. You know, so it, it takes a lot of time thinking. How am I going to do it? Is the audience going to benefit from this noha? Is it something maybe which they can recite yeah. as well? I don't want it to become too difficult, something which can benefit everyone. So you have a lot of thinking to do when you do uh, studio compositions. Well, um, I think uh, you've really like explained properly how the, you know, behind the scene is done because, uh, you know, people usually wonder like, what really, uh, how do you come up with the tunes and everything? Mm. It's a very difficult question to answer, but mm. uh, you, yeah, you've said it, you put it right. I mean, you've explained. So I'll ask a question uh, to Yusuf. I think uh, you had told me that you wanted to ask him a question. You can go ahead. Yes, please. Um, thank you. Uh, Brother Yusuf, I am also like, I find all of this very, very interesting. So I had a question as well. Um, how long does it take for you to practice a Naha in the studio um, for them to do the chorus? And like, what is the actual role of the chorus? And how long does the whole chorus procedure take, you know, for the whole album? Yeah, the chorus team does play a very, very big role uh, in, in the recording. I, I get very frustrated. Uh, for example, if I send the chorus team a Naha and they have to do the chorus, and let's say there's a note uh, which I really love, uh, like one bit, uh, which I personally really love, and they don't catch the tune. I'd personally tell them, look, you have to go do it again because I'm not happy with it. And that has to be done. So the chorus team, they do put a lot of hard time and effort. So this this year, my noha agar tum hote, a noha which I really uh, paid a lot of close attention to, uh, Believe it or not, these chorus teams have been working in the studio for very many years and they have very, very, uh, they're very experienced in their job. So uh, I think it takes them maybe six to seven hours uh, minimum to do a whole album chorus in, in a night. And, and they're in Pakistan, oh mashallah, they're very, they're very uh, serious with their job and it's something they're very passionate about. So I've worked okay. with two two different chorus teams, Alhamdulillah. I've worked with the Nasir Razgar party, uh, who are well-known Noha Khan in Karachi. Uh, they also do the chorus team for very, very uh, well-known Noha Khan, Mir Hassan Mir Saab, Shahid Baltistani Saab, uh, and many, many other more Noha Khan. So these guys, uh, Nasir Razgar party, known as Sono Monu uh, and Rajabai, they are very, very uh, experienced in this job. And people, uh, people love them because uh, their chorus has got a different feeling they they put some mashallah Allah has blessed them with beautiful voices uh, when they do the chorus it's it's got that deep voice which makes you feel it honestly gives you goosebumps believe it or not uh, the second yeah. team I worked with this year was a close friend of mine Mohsin Hashmi Saab from Karachi him and, and uh, okay. a few of his brothers uh, worked with him this year and he did this year's album so the one line for example of of Anoha uh, it requires them to do that one line depending on how how uh, quick they are with learning it but you have to do it at least 10 times 10 to 12 times you have to do that same line uh, over and over again uh, so you need patience you need a lot of patience yeah it's it's very difficult I, I don't know how they do it to be fair like even the voice gets tired every human does get tired yeah so. imagine the voice actually gets tired I was just going to say that like you know repeating again and again you sort of had, yeah. you know, effect of your voice and 
how do you keep up with them like really it's a, it's a question that even i want to yeah it's i honestly even that i can't answer myself i don't know how they do it uh like it's it's just phenomenal it's phenomenal like the way they do it is really amazing mashallah and they're really they're really really uh passionate about it which it gives the, the person a good feeling as well you know because they're putting time and effort into your into your work so you feel that you can yeah, share yeah. ideas and work together and it's all all for shaheed the karbala end of the day so as long as they accept it this is the main thing thanks uh you thank um salwa uh, got your answer there yeah so now we know uh, how the chorus procedure takes place and also um, um it's really like a tedious job you need a lot of uh consistency you need a lot of uh, what do you say uh, patience you know to, to keep up with these things because uh, if you lose that consistency i feel then you know you you, you, you sort of lose your track also so it's all, all about consistency and there's a lot of hard work really that goes on behind uh, you know may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the reciters all uh, the team effort that goes on behind really allah ta'ala may bless your tireless efforts uh, this is for all the reciters generally um now yusuf i know that uh, we are no more in the in the morning months uh, of muharram and safar but you know since we have been talking about your album uh we would just like to a short clip here uh, uh, so that we can take a look at uh, one of your no hard record uh, one of your uh, from one of your albums for this year muharram inshallah mera 18 baras wala na marta ba saniye that was very overwhelming and heart touching uh what beautiful kalam has been shared and uh a beautiful composition all you so i really loved uh the work that's been done and this uh may allah bless you again for your tireless efforts uh would you like to add something on this yusuf uh the noha which was uh, showed is definitely the is very very close to my heart this noha yeah uh, not only the poetry but even the composition yeah. mashallah very heartbreaking and it actually reminds you of the tragedy which mola abbas sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, went through and it's is very heartbreaking may allah accept it and inshallah uh, we were given inshallah 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 amen okay so um guys you know i just want to like have a um, And, uh, like a fun conversation with you like just a few quick questions okay for the two of you yeah. so 
So sure. um, this is like, you know, so that we can get a bit more, you can say, comfortable and uh, a bit like relaxed, okay? Um, Salwa, you know, let me ask you, okay? So I'll start with Salwa. Salwa, can you tell us something really funny that happened very recently with you? Like an incident in public, um, perhaps, that you messed up? Um, okay, uh, so first of all, um, <laughs> about me, okay, I, um, I have had quite a few embarrassing moments in my life. And I think overall, I'm just a, a funny person, you know? So like these kind of things, they usually happen with me a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> but okay. since you asked for the most recent one, so I will tell you the most recent one. No, but actually, literally, like I think um, my cousins as well. And like, I think even you as my sister, I think everyone knows that Salwa just always does something which is funny, you know, <laughs> like it just happens. So um, recently, actually, um, now that universities have actually uh, finally opened in person, alhamdulillah, okay, not completely, but uh, to an extent, not completely, but to an extent. And like some of my classes are in person. Basically, we had the choice to choose in person or online. And I purposely chose some of my classes to be in person because I really missed the university experience, you know, the campus experience. And I like, you know, making friends and like being on campus, you know, it, and it, even when you're learning, it makes a difference when you're on campus and then when you're online, you know. So anyways, I was really excited. It was my first day. I was like, this is my first day back to campus. You know, I just can't wait. You know, I was so excited, you know, and I went and um, I came like early. I was like even before time, you know, I was the first one in my class and then people slowly started coming in and, um, and you know, I'm very socializing. I like talking to people. So when people started coming in, I started talking to them, you know, hi, how are you? Where are you from? So and so, you know. Okay, um, now the chairs in this particular lecture hall, this lecture hall wasn't very big, by the way. Like it was a it was a small lecture hall, and there was not that many people, like, but there were like enough students, okay? Like enough students, like about maybe about 15 students were already there, okay. And the chairs in this lecture hall were, they were a bit weird, you know? Uh, they were like, I don't know, like they were sliding chairs or something like that. And you okay. just have to be extra careful okay. on them, okay? So now when I came in, I noticed the chairs and I was like, okay, these chairs are a bit weird. I hope nothing funny happens. You know, knowing me, I was like, I hope nothing funny happens here. Anyways, so it was, everything was going perfectly fine, you know? And then um, the teacher, he walked in and we still didn't know that he was the teacher. Okay, but someone just walked in, we didn't know who. So I wasn't on my chair at that time. Like I was standing and I was talking to a friend. Um, anyways, the, the teacher, when he walked in, he announced, he, he said hello and we were like, okay, so he's the teacher, okay. So we understood he was the teacher. So I was talking to my friend and I was just trying to go back to my chair, you know, nicely trying to go back to my chair. And I was okay. about to sit down and I fell off the chair. Like, believe it or not, what? I actually fell off. I fell off that chair. Like the teacher, what? he just walked you in. You fell off the chair in front of everybody? On your first in day of uni? Everyone. On the first day of uni. And the teacher, he just walked in, you know, he didn't even know what was going. He didn't even put his bag down yet. He didn't even sit down. He didn't even, like, he just, he just came, you know, and like, I just fell off my chair and it was it was loud. Like everyone turned to look, you know, and that friend that I was talking to, oh she was God. like, oh my God, are you okay? <laughs> and then everyone was just like, it was like, okay, what is happening? And then my, my teacher as well, like he was like, okay, what just happened? Who just fell down? Like this teacher doesn't even know me. He doesn't even know who I am. No one knows me. Oh my God. And this, this is the first impression that I make anyways, but you know, like, what am I supposed to do? Was I supposed to cry? So I laughed, you know, I, I laughed. I was like, this happens, you know, this happens. And then my teacher was like, yeah, this happens to the best of us. And then, you know, I feel like when I laughed, that's when everyone relaxed a bit because at first everyone was like, oh my God, is she okay? But then I feel like it depends on how you handle yourself in these situations, 
you know if you choose to panic or if you choose to be chill about it you know i chose to be chill about it i laughed and everybody laughed and it was a good story for the day you know and yeah it was nice <laughs> it, it is definitely a good story it certainly made me laugh okay i mean that is a first falling in class like on the first day of uni and i mean it's you know it is embarrassing but then yeah the, you know automatically like eventually you make friends and you know that becomes like a memory then you know you remember it for the rest of your life that okay this happened this was one of the days you know it's it's fun yeah uni days are always fun like even i miss them you know the kind of fun that we had that's something just extraordinary you know Okay, um, thanks, uh, Salwa, for sharing that. I mean, really, that, that takes a lot of courage to share on a you know, public platform like that. So thank you. Um, now, Yusuf, uh, just uh, a question for you. Um, can you tell us what, key, what, what three uh, tips would you advise for one to become successful in life? sorry i just have to unmute myself uh so that was a very funny story um so number one i think uh time consuming is a very important key in life uh if you don't if you're not really punctual with your time i don't think you're gonna get anywhere like uh, to be successful time in av in like every aspect of life is very important anything you do uh um secondly being honest being honest is very important in every situation uh whether you're wrong whether you're right always you know just be honest it's not gonna harm you yeah. it's just uh, it's important to be honest and thirdly always have a positive mindset um related to what solo said for example falling off the chair she was positive about it and uh, <laughs> end of the day you know everyone had a laugh and it's normal it happens so just be happy be positive yeah. and I guess that's a huge role of success. Thank you, Yusuf. The beautiful, very beautiful points uh, you've shared, and I hope that we can take lessons from that. Yeah. So uh, before we wrap the show, is there anything that you, you both would like to say or ask me or something? Uh, we're wrapping the show. Yeah, it was. Um, I think it thank was. You. Yeah, thank you for having it us here. It was really nice being here. Um, it's always nice um, having you as a host and being on this show. And yet again, this was a really good experience. So thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, thank, thanks to the both of you. Uh, I really appreciate that you guys took out your precious time and joined me for today's uh, session. And I hope that everyone can benefit from what we just conversed on and uh, we had a great time. So thank you so much. Jazakumullahu uh, khairan. And wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I hope that today's session was uh, informative and educational. Uh, you know, we talked about how, what really goes on uh, behind the procedure of recording tracks and, you know, what happens with the chorus, uh, what really goes on in the studio. And of course, we discussed about the importance of writing poetry in the praise of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim as -salam. So um, um, I think there's something really nice things that, you know, we can ponder upon. And what I would like to end with is that uh, if you let people's perception of you dictate your behavior, you will never grow as a person. But if you leave yourself open to new experiences, despite what others think, then you will learn and grow and um, you know always be confident about yourself believe in yourself you know focus prioritize set your goal be broad-minded and you know move along with current times and always stay humble at the end of the day don't let that ego get to you so in order to become successful in life these are some of the key points that you can probably keep in mind Thank you so much. And inshallah, I'll be catching you next week with a very interesting episode and some really inspiring uh, guests. So stay tuned for next week. Same time with me on Youth Matters. Uh, Wassalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.